Hey guys, Brilliant B2K here with another new show, Mr. Mommy, a show dedicated to the men and women in your life who are domestically challenged. Now, although this show is about men and women, does not mean the children in the family can't learn a thing or two. You can always rewind it back and use it as a tutorial to help them in those areas they are lacking. Now, back to the focus. This show is dedicated to bringing families together, not using negative, divisive sensationalism to divide us up. Let's face it, there's enough of that out there. In fact, I was reading an article the other day that covers the very subject that's going to be this show. And this particular article I was reading was in a woman's magazine. After I read it, I was infuriated as a man about other men. I was so pissed off, I wanted to beat up a man. For no reason. Amazing. Amazing. So I felt to myself, well, if I'm feeling this way, imagine how women feel when they read this. This is amazing. There was a survey in the article. It referenced this survey completed by MomsNet that skewed everything towards the women. It said that men did half the work in the home. It said that women thought that they did all the work. It said that the work that was listed was the most important by virtue of the questions that they asked. How insulting is that for a woman to read? How insulting for a man to have to go through this kind of crazy thought process and he doesn't even know what he's walking into when he comes home. So let's get this straight. There was an article with the survey that says men only do half the work in the home. Oh really? My name is H.P. Herbert III and I really, let me tell you, I'm offended. I, I, I don't know what else to say except for it's a preponderance of the evidence. It's, it's an outright bold face alternative fact <laughs> you know it's not even true I mean how could you say such a thing that's like saying ants can only lift 50 percent of their body weight and if you did any kind of research you would know that's not true <laughs> so this is why this show is focused on bringing couples and families together there's enough of distractions out there to keep us apart and that's dividing us I just like the channel, wants to make sure that we all are focused on the things that matter in life the most. Love, family, and laughter. So, that being said, sit back and enjoy the show. Mr. Mommy. So this is what a messy bed looks like. Sleeping dog over here, don't bother me. It's the title of today's show. How to make a bed. All you wanna do is make sure every layer of sheet and every layer that goes on top of the bed is nice, flat, and smooth. And you wanna tuck all the edges underneath the mattress. You pull, you stretch, and you tuck. So the first thing I'm gonna do is start on this edge that I'm already standing at. And you can see I've already pulled down a little bit, okay? You can see the line, straight lines from here to there, and that's just the stress line showing you where I pulled. But what I'm going to do here is tuck. So you're taking any excess fabric on the edges. You're gonna pull and tighten, and then tuck. Pull and tuck, pull and tuck pull and tuck and you got a nice smooth surface as a result all right so you can see that I'm already starting to get a flat smooth surface so our next order of business once we get a nice flat surface just like building a floor or building a house you want to make sure your floor is nice and smooth and it's the same thing with the bed. Before you can put the bed spread on, the mattress cover and mattress protector, whichever one you have, or if you have both, have to be smooth. Now, the bed spread. Well, the bed a bed spread has the elastic material around the edges. This is what holds the bed spread on to the mattress. So 
this is why a flop with the bed spread is not very hard to do. It catches the air great, but it's not going to spread out very far, which is the whole point of the flop. So let me show you again. So once you get your bed spread on, that was the flop. Once you get your bed spread on, you want to make sure your edges line up. And you'll know where your edges are with the bed spread because they have a crease for each edge. Just like here. Now, by the way, this is also the most difficult of the sheet fabric to fold a bed spread. There's no real corners on it. Oh, they may sew the little edges on, but that doesn't make it any easier. Now, what I just did there was I, I did an arm length measure. I stretched out the sides to see what was what. I was trying to make sure that I was putting the edges on the right end. Um, as you know, the bed is a rectangle shape. It's not a perfect square. Therefore, I didn't want to sit here on camera and accidentally try and put the wrong sides together. Put in the uh, long part of the bed and tuck it underneath the short part of the bed spread. That would not be fun. And you do the same thing when you have three sisters that used to get on you. A mom, grandma, you begin to appreciate all the things that go along with making a bed. Now, this is the sheet. Okay, now I'm gonna do a flop. Now I'm gonna, I just I gave myself an unfair advantage. I'm gonna show you the flop. Now, the goal is, again, to get most if not all of the bed covered, about 85% with the sheet, just by flopping the cover and using the air to create a spread. So here's my flop. Let's see if we can do it in one try. Oh, look at that! Look at that! Oh, 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 oh my God! That was so hey! So what is the perfect flop? What is a flop? A flop is a cross between a flip and creating air underneath a blanket so much, so powerful that it creates that popping noise. And when you do it perfectly, it creates the popping noise and it also flattens the sheet out in the air like a magic carpet. I mean, it's an amazing sight. You just saw one. It's an amazing sight. So here's how it works. When you flip that blanket or sheet in the air, you want to try and get that thing as even as possible in the air so that when it gets together with that bed, when it gets together with that bed, the two are marrying each other. They're connecting. It's like two lost souls finding each other in a sea of madness, mad love. The flop. I got it right the first try. Did you see that? Did you see that flop? That was awesome. <laughs> that was awesome. The first try on camera. One thing that my wife likes is the bottom of the sheet to be tucked under the foot of the bed. Now the blanket. Now the blanket. Now, coincidentally, before I put the blanket on, it's very important to remember that the tags should all be facing in the same direction. You don't want to tag up by your head. You want to tag facing down towards your feet. So, that tag is facing down toward the feet. And I am going to commence a flop. You guys ready? 
Oh, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. The second one was bad. This the first one was better, but that one was pretty darn good, man. Now this layer right here is the layer my wife loves. I like the cotton and the way the other layers feel because they're soft to the skin's touch. Obviously, I like that. Yeah, but my wife likes this one because of the design and it was made by Jessica Simpson's company. I like it because it reminds me of my grandma. Uh, both my grandmas, as a matter of fact. We can start laying the decorative pillows on. Now everyone has a different way that they do things. As long as you have it set up the way you and your family likes it. Now, Here's one more caveat I should tell you. What I'm doing is a big no-no in my house when I was a kid. Bed is done. But let me be very specific with you. The way the pillows are on this bed and the way the cover is turned turned up, you would you would get in trouble in my house doing it this way. This is the way when I was a kid. Um, this is the way my um, wife likes it, and coincidentally, when you're getting in bed, people would say, did you turn down the bed? And this is what they mean by turn down the bed. The bed is now turned down, okay? But there is a decorative way of turning down the bed, especially if there's two people that live in the house and that sleep in the bed. Um, what you would do is tuck and fold. Tuck and fold. The quilt, bedspread, I'm sorry, the blanket, the quilt, and the sheet fold it over, revealing the head part of the bed. And if you do this right, you can see all layers of your blanket, your sheet, and any decorative covering. It, it's like a three-tone there, you know? You got your sheet, your blanket, so this is what a turn down bed looks like. Without the pillows on it, obviously. If the pillows were on it, it would look like this. But this is what a turned down bed looks like. The pillow um, and the decorative pillows would be removed to turn it down if you were in a bed that had the covers already folded over. We appreciate all of the likes and subscribe. Please continue to do so, and we will continue to make great shows. Thank you.